So uh, my buddy Ryan Holiday had a series of books, still does, where he takes the ideas of the Stoics and he applies them to contemporary uh, terms. He has this whole cottage industry that he's doing very well with. And I'd asked him years ago if I could do that with Camus. And he's like, sure, go for it. And I was going to rework Camus' The Myth of Sisyphus. And I read it recently. I reread it. And this wasn't the book I remembered at all. Uh, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to write the book that I remembered. But the more I was writing it, I one of the things I always yell at conservatives about, and there's a long list, is they don't talk about um, the great victory of conservatism, which was the winning of the Cold War without firing a shot. And I said, you can't expect the New York Times to tell this story because the blood is on their hands. And I'm like, well, Michael, instead of complaining about it, why don't you do it? Why don't you talk? That is a great example of the good guys winning over the bad guys. And that's become, A, it's the victory is beautiful, but also pointing out to people, when people are like, oh, things are worse than they've ever been, they, they don't appreciate how bad things were in the 30s, uh, what Stalin was doing overseas and how people in the West were advocating to bring that here. So that's kind of pointing out how bad things were and how good they became. And uh, you don't have to be a Republican or conservative to be delighted at the collapse of totalitarianism and the peaceful liberation of half the world. So that's a picture of the good guys winning. Oh yeah. Well, how does that connect to Sisyphus? And uh, maybe to speak deeper to life and the whatever the hell this thing is, which is what I remember the myth of Sisyphus being about. So like, where does the threat of Camus sort of uh, lie in the work that you're doing? So the myth of Sisyphus what I had remembered incorrectly is actually just a five, like seven, five to seven page, uh, like coda to the whole book at the very end. Like you only need to read that little essay called The Myth of Sisyphus. The broader work is about Camus' concept of the absurd and the absurd man within literature. And he goes, and it's just like, I don't really care about this character and Dostoevsky and all this other stuff that you're talking about. It's of no relevance. But what he, the myth of Sisyphus, the myth itself, not the book or the, or the, essay of his is this Greek character and Sisyphus is forced in hell to uh, roll a rock up a hill uh, for eternity. At the very last moment, the rock falls away. And Camus' takeaway from the story is that we have to met, we must imagine Sisyphus happy. And there's several interpretations of this, but one is once you accept that you are living an absurdist existence, once you own your reality, it loses its um, bite. And you can st start with that as your kind of baseline. And bite is suffering. A and hopelessness. So I, I think when people look at how much ridiculousness is happening in America and it's escalating, you can either think, oh, all is lost, or you can, and I think you and I have lived our lives like this, you can live life more like a surfer whereas you're never gonna control the ocean, but you can sure enjoy that ride and stop. Tr if you're trying to control the waves, yeah, you're done. But if you're like, all right, I've got my board, I'm gonna see where this takes me. Surfing, from what I understand, is a pretty fun activity and also sometimes dangerous, but you'd have to ask Tulsi about that. <laughs>